Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Pro League once again here on Monday. We are about to jump into a couple of really fun matches here on Valdez with me as Mingle today. Indeed, Valdez, it's so good to be here once again, man. We got so many great Zerg players playing today, which is always, you know, my favorite part of Pro League. Oh, yeah. Well, here you do see Spenu doing pretty well for themselves so far. They get that win. It was in an ace match. And they're going to be going up against CJ Entis, who has lost once again. Uh, notably doing much better in the beginning two rounds of Pro League compared to the uh, second uh, or the third? last two rounds. <laughs> the third and fourth round so far. Yeah, you know, CJ have kind of dropped off their, their ace players. They're having a bit of a harder time this time around. Um, both kind of slumping it around the same time. Maybe they, they both took time off when they thought they needed it, which I think is a probably a good move before going into this round, but they really have to start lifting. The time is now, and it's up against uh, one of the ugly weaker teams, Spenu. Not as weak as Prime, but you know they aren't near the top like SKT. They, they do have some, uh, some weaknesses. Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you look at Spenu in terms of points, they are in uh, fifth place, I believe, but it's still going to be pretty hard uh, to make it to those finals. The top four teams on top are pretty far ahead uh, outside of Casey Rolster, who's got 162 in fourth place. They're the closest. I guess that's really like the only team that the other teams down bottom could have a chance of overtaking, but I think uh, one of these teams are gonna have to win the round four playoffs or at least get second place in order to have a decent chance. So uh, it's hard to say the least. It is hard to say. I mean, uh, this is going to be one of our closest, oh, definitely the closest match today, these these two teams, yeah. Spenu and uh, and CJ. Like, uh, CJ, obviously, yeah, they, they are struggling right now, and Spenu, they've been looking great. They, they're a fantastic lineup of players, and even today they're, they're looking uh, rather strong with the matchups they got. Yep, they really are. And uh, taking a look so far here at the team rankings, you do see Samsung Galaxy Khan up there with a... 1-0 and plus 3 victory. I think that's the biggest surprise so far around 4. But oh, to be man. honest, we haven't had too many games. Only one week so far. Yeah, they look so strong in, the, in that one match they played. Their, uh, their Terrans are really starting to lift for that team. And as the winner rankings, we do have Mario here on Zest leading the way now. Zest finding his way up there. With the, uh, the certainly the most games played in Pro League. Oh, yeah. Uh, by far. Uh, he was at a time, he was like 10 and 10. It was something crazy. He got played all the time. Uh, you guys do see the second page here, the winner's rankings. Uh, Flash still has not broken 50%, unfortunately. Classic and Dream have not played enough games, although they're both 10-3 and three dominating Pro League. Yeah, and here is the first match of today, Lenok versus Bial starting it off on Terraform. That's going to be very exciting. It's going to be great to see Lenok play again. I definitely favor Bial in this match, but the way bial has been playing lately, like anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, he's shown great best of five ZBZ series. He's shown terrible best of five ZBZ series. He's kind of been all over the place, which is what you were saying before about how these guys are kind of slumping and not really playing their game at times. But I, as well, would favor Bial in that matchup. Yeah, I mean, looking at the second one as well, Curious versus Beyond Curious. Coming off that DreamHack win, won two of his pro league games last uh, match last week as well. So very excited for him to see if he can keep that momentum up and running, stay on that high. Yeah. Curious for me is that guy who I think should definitely take this one. I think Bjorn, or rather Bjorn definitely, you know, has a decent chance, but definitely favoring Curious in that matchup. Then we go into Bomber versus Hero. Hero uh, still a very dominant and very strong Protoss, but he's not 100% on his game these days. Yeah, I was very on the fence with this one because, you know, currently uh, we did see Hero go down to Flash. And I think Bomber has a very similar sort of style, maybe a little less mechanical, but Bomber is very greedy early on. He likes to go for double CCs when he can. So if, he can, if he's allowed to do that the way Hero allowed Flash to do that, Bomber could go for a very scary pull the boys kind of timing attack. Yeah, he definitely could. I just hope that Hero is noticing his recent weakness in the matchup and he's uh, practicing for this one here. Glory, ga Glory days once again for the Spenu Zergs. One can only hope. And key players of CJ are struggling, which we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. And that last matchup we didn't get to really talk about, Dongregu versus Sky High. This one is interesting because it is on Iron Fortress. Oh, yeah. And Sky High is 100% Mech Terran. So I'm very curious to see uh, how he's going to pull it off on that map if it gets to that map. Is he going to force it on that map? You if, know, yeah. we've, we've seen it not work out before on that map. Especially but, on uh, that map. Yeah. And uh, don't worry, I, I think he's a good enough player. He's playing pretty well these days, so um, 
I also favored him in that one, Moonblade. Not sure yeah. about you. He, yeah, I, I, I voted for DRG on that one. I definitely think he's good enough. He, he might not be on top of his game, but he's certainly good enough to, to break apart a Mech Terran on such a wide open map like Iron Fortress. For sure. Well, jumping into introducing our players from the first match here, it is Lenok back once again. This guy was like the star of round number one here for, uh, at the time, Startail. That's right. Our Yoi Flash Wolves. And uh, kind of fell off since then, but he, he sees time every so often. He will come out today first. Yeah, he is, is known for his killing of the Protoss back in uh, those days earlier this year. Since then, really, really kind of dropped off in a big way. Yeah, he, recently he's, he's been doing okay with himself. He went to DreamHack, didn't find much luck, and got to play Pro League once, lost to Blaze, aka Panic. And Blaze, he'll yeah. be playing today. Yeah, we get to have fun with that one a little bit later, Valdez. And here's Bial, though, and Bial, he's kind of back in form in terms of ZVP. He defeated Stats and Zest in Star League very recently in the group stage. Uh, losing to life in his last curling match there. That's okay though. I mean, he's he's doing better overall. It's a really good sign when he gets out of that group of death. Even though it was against two Protosses, it shows that he's kind of got his confidence back from yeah. the games that we saw. So let's see how this one is going to go down, guys. Game number one will be on Terraform. But first, we're going to take a look here at our predictions. Oh man, 73%. I'm falling behind. Well, Yudei Yun is leading the way. It's still very early, Moonlight. It's okay. I think I think we're going to get him today. We're going to get him. <laughs> so it's all about here at Prairie League. Yep. It's, all it's all about, about the about predictions. It's all about the cost as well, as. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is coming to game number one here on Terraform. Lenox versus Yell. Here in the top left in the red from Spenu, it is Lenok. Also known as the Lenoctopus. And there he is. <laughs> Funny he doesn't say anything about it in the words, but... Uh, we know what she meant. Yeah. She can't really draw. I, I hope so. <laughs> Bottom right, we do have Bio. I'm glad you mentioned that. She's, uh, she's not the best drawer out, the the, out of the GG girls. No, she puts in the least amount of it. Here we go, though. This one's a little bit better. Playing the accordion, I believe it I was. Know, I, it look, kind of looked like a bent piece of paper to me, Moonlade. Could have been one of those fans, I, actually. Hey, man. The SK Telecom ones that they give out here. Oh, you might be right there, actually. We'll never know, just because her drawing is not good enough. <laughs> Horrible drawing. That's this is it. how we start the game in oh! just by insulting the GG girls. This is girls. what Wolf does when he's not casting. He's on his phone. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. Pay attention, Wolf. <laughs> All right. Let's see how these guys start off. No early pulls this time around in the ZVZ. So we may get to that glorious roach stage, Valdez, that I, I, so. that I dream about every night. Dream about it every night, Moonlid? Is that so? Nothing but roaches, my friends. But look at this. Look at this. Where's this turn going? Where are you going, young man? Well... To the gold? Yeah. Oh. He's got to be. It's Leenok. It's Leenok. It's a ZVZ, though, so it's a little bit different. It's like, well, your base is very exposed. This could lead to uh, some pretty messy situations if it's caught out early enough. Yeah. But Leenok kind of re re relies on this a bunch of times um, in ZVZs even, where he relies on it just going undetected and trying to get out just that many more roaches than his opponent and uh, just trying to kill him pretty early on even uh, before that base can uh, really be punished. Yeah, well, look at this. We are actually seeing that gas before pool as well from Biel. So we will have that speedlings nice and early. You'll get failings as well, I'm sure. So the aggression will be uh, very, very possible in this kind of situation. Same thing went for Leonok there. You know, he went for that early gas as well. So the timings will be very similar in terms of Zergling speed. Yeah. I guess you kind of have to go for that, just to be a bit defensive. Uh, eventually, once Biel sees that there's no hats there, he's going to know for sure. Uh, especially because he is playing against Leenok. Yeah. This isn't, uh, you know, anyone else, really. First thing that kind of happens, I think, for Biel's mind, the moment he scouts us with the Noble, is like, oh my god, he's going for a one base all-in. I have to be so defensive right now. I get throw down a spine crawler. I get at speed, but look at this. Not Where bad. Is he? he knows. <laughs> he's like, it's Leenok. Well, let me check this real quick. <laughs> 
He's That's paranoid. Oh, he's not. Oh, he just sees it yeah. somehow. Wow. He's being sneaky. Sneaky indeed. Six links on the way. Only sneaky two. Sneaky beaky. This could be ugly. Bial's already figured this out. Linux gimmicks not going to be uh, flying on by. Yeah. And we do have six lings on the way here for Bial. Could be a queen sniping set of lings here. Yeah, that would make sense as well. Look at this. Two lings did hatch from that hatchery, though. So they will be around to help defend. That should be enough to ward off this many lings if the queen is there as well. If it's there, though. It looks like they are going to be used mm. for scouting, so he's not going to have an idea. And an early bailing nest for Bial. Exact timings for both these players. They both know exactly what they're doing. Here come the six lings. And look at that. Not a single drone in that natural either. Oh, he's going to go for the lings. Smart choice from Bial here, getting two for three. Yeah, just loses one, but that's just fine. He's got his own queen back at home to deal with the lings of uh, Leenok. Leenok actually missed micring there and losing one of his lings. Mm. This is a very pressure situation here because both sides are going to be looking to do the damage. And with Lenox super exposed in the middle of the map hatchery, if he uh, falls behind in links or banelings at any time, like he's just going to lose it. Yeah, that's really what this is all about. But you do see Biel, uh going very heavy on the drones, actually. Just making enough links to put some pressure on and making some safe banelings. Mm. And he's going to get his economy ahead. I mean, Lenox does have that goal, but if he's only pumping links. And Biel can defend. Biel's still going to be ahead. Yeah, that's a very good point. Uh, I, I do like that approach from Biel. Let's see how much he's going to invest in the drones from here on out. He's playing the very defensively. He's, he's got those two queens in front plus a spine. So he certainly has a defense in place to kind of weather the storm at any point. But going on beyond that is, is the question. 28 drones to 19 currently. Yeah. Leonard's going to try to force this. He's sending in some speedlings into the drone line actually right now. I think only getting one of those kills. Oh, going for the spine? No. Going to be going for the drones instead. Big hit. Not Ugh. getting the hits either. That was a disaster. Those banelings really didn't hit anything, to be honest. A lot of really great focus firing there from Biel with his queens and the spine even. Oh, going to get some drones here. But is that actually enough? I don't think so. It's 32 to 24 now. Biel is essentially stabilized. Looks like Lenok is going to be droning up from this point on, and he will catch up pretty quickly. But from there on, on from there on, what is the the next move from Biel? With that Roach one, I, I get the impression it's going to be Roach Bane from here. Yeah. Um, Biel, you know, he's he's kind of even now with Lenok in terms of workers, but he's gotten those workers a bit earlier. So I guess he can go into Roach's a bit faster, and he also does have a slightly higher drone count at this point. We do see finally Lenok does put down his own Rotorn. Trying to go for that snipe there on that one baneling. It's uh, really low. Oh, oh he could, if he detonated then, he could have got so many Zerglings and another missed micro from Lenok playing uh, mm. you know, a little bit under the gun here. Not really performing as well as he should with these banelings. <laughs> Slow, painful death. Mm. Just one more baneling that can be easily sniped down there by the spine crawler and the queen if he wants it. Yeah, there's no the real flings back here. And he's making 10 roaches before Leenok. Leenok will have enough to pump out his own 10 roaches, and Biel's not going to be able to get over to the base. So at this point, I mean, Leenok's kind of gotten away with the gold. Yeah, he's kind of read every situation that might be on the map as well. Like He's, he's played it very smartly for now, but let's have a look. Where are all these roaches currently, and are they going to be in place for this roach timing? 16 links behind this as well on the way. Yeah, it's funny that Leenok actually delayed making all those roaches. I, maybe he didn't have the larva actually at the time. That's another possibility. Yeah, he's lacking gas as well, which is a problem. Down goes his baneling. One HP. Boom. Wow. All right. Well, here comes the problem here. There's so many more roaches for Bjell right now. This is a problem when you have such an exposed base like this, but roaches popping out just in time. Yep. He needs to group up with his roaches. Uh, luckily, he had most of them come out there from oh, the gold yeah. hatchery. But look at this. The ladies coming forward, tanking for the roaches here at Bjell. And even the Bailing going to get a pretty nice hit there. Yeah, beautiful hit there, actually. This is just simply too much from Bjell. He's completely overrunning this base. Is uh, Oh, the drone. Oh, boy. Goodbye mining here from the gold. Even if he doesn't kill Lenok here, he's done so much damage to the economy. Yeah, any follow-up from here would just be perfect. Really nice timing from Biel. You know, he took full advantage of the positioning of this base. It is such a risk to have a base out like this when you are in a mirror match, especially in ZVZ. GG. GG. There you go. Lenok going for his very signature gimmick, but Biel had to figure it figured out the whole way through. Really nicely done.
Yep, read like a book. He, he scattered him instantly with that Overlord, that second Overlord. He knew it was up, so... Bit of a rough start for Spanu, but I, to be honest, I think it was probably expected by everyone. Yeah. Linux had to really dig deep and go for some super gimmick to try and get ahead in that one. It, it was just, I don't know about it on that map, to be honest. Um, Expedition Lost, I feel like, is a little bit different. You get a little bit closer to your opponent. It's kind of more direct pathway. But on this map, it's kind of just pretty easy to scout very early on. And yeah. It's pretty far away from your opponent, too. It's a little bit of a bigger map, I think. Yeah, that's right. It's uh, it's certainly just a little too small, that map. Uh, Terraform. You really have to hope that your opponent has no experience with this kind of style. But a uh, rough start to Spenu. But next map is going to be Curious versus Young. And this should be a little bit more fun. It's going to be on Cactus Valley, so a big, juicy map. Obviously, Curious loves this kind of map. He loves to go to late game. He's got such a great macro style. So I'm very excited.